People of Earth, attention! This is the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. Gentlemen, ladies, so glad to see you could make it. My fellow officers, I think you know why we're here. Now, I bet a few of the more astute among you may have noticed a distinct thinning in the ranks of late. Not to worry, I see this as practical considerations of business in action. I don't think I need remind any of you of your fallen comrades, of what their lives meant to each one of us. And as I've said before, there is a weight in this organization that each one of us needs to carry, a load that must be borne. And if you're not up to that task, well, I'm afraid retirement may be your only option, whatever form that retirement might take. Their sacrifice in the line of duty, in their task of protecting the lives of the citizens of this city, will not be forgotten, nor will it go unavenged. Whether on this battlefield or in a court of law, I swear that justice will be honored. Now, I know that sounds blatantly unfair. What with them all gone now, suddenly this burden is shifted upon the rest of us. But I believe that all of you are up to this task. The fact that you survived this long to be standing here with me now just proves that fact. And look at the plus side. Your percentage take just went way up. That's an incentive if ever I've heard one. What we're about to do here is in defense of the free citizens of the city of Eastling. And we will not falter. If you believe your skills or bravery are inadequate for this mission, or if you believe the loss of your life would be too much for your loved ones to bear, then leave now. None of us will think the worse of you. Now, of course, with a higher pay grade does come an increased risk. So while you're out there mowing down John Law by the dozens, I want you to remember a couple of things. One, be ruthless and merciless because they're going to be trying to kill you. And two, fight as if your life depends on it. Because it does. Because if any of you cut and run on me on this point, you better hope they kill me. Because if they don't, not only will you not be getting a recommendation from me on your resume, but you will be looking over your shoulder for the rest of your life. Now, that's not a threat. And that's not a promise. That is a certainty. If they surrender, arrest them. If not, show them the mercy they would show you. You all know your training. When we go in, be resolute and efficient, and watch each other's backs. Now I expect the best out of you guys, so give it your all. And remember, when this baby lights up, it's everyone for themselves. So, is it time for the show? Are we all prepared? All right, then. Let's move. Technical Difficulties presents The Account, A Tale of the Waking World, The Snows Are Eternal, Part 14. Where the hell are they? Baines! Sir? Didn't they say they were on their way here? Yes, sir. They said they'd be here in just a few minutes. Hang on. This might be them. It's about time. Oh. Oh. Uh. Uh. Well, careful, sir! Everyone look out! you looking at me like that for? You both said you couldn't drive a stick. Actually, I said I could drive a stick. Oh, sorry. Must have misheard you. Laughlin, 
Sorry we're a bit late. You made it just barely, Phillips. Let's get in out of this weather. Have Luxor and his men arrived yet? As near as we can tell. The swap location is the warehouse right across the alley. As soon as you sent me the coordinates, I had a sweep done. Street cameras are useless in this weather, and all the security cameras inside the warehouse have been disabled. What about thermal or psychic scans? Both registered multiple occupants before they were jammed out. Well, we jammed a psychic scan? Was that electronic or organic? Two of my goblin officers are trained sensitives. I thought only military and corporate espionage grade stuff did that kind of jamming. This guy's got some serious resources for a crook. He likes to collect toys. Question is, is he in there? If I were him, I wouldn't take a chance that big by showing up in person. Oh, don't worry. He'll be in there. He has a flair for the dramatic, and he's crazy. And I think he has a very strong desire to meet you personally, Hanover. Well, I gathered that from the invitation, but what makes it personal? I thought you were the one he was after. I am, and if he can get to me by harming you, he will, so be prepared for anything. Speaking of this meeting, this key he's after, do you have it, Phillips? I have it on me, yes. And I assume you intend on handing it over to him in exchange for Professor Somdi's life. That is sort of the intention of this arrangement. As is risking the lives of everyone in the city for the sake of one person, evidently. We are on the same side here. If half of what I've read about the angels is true, then that key is the only thing standing between this city and its total destruction. I should arrest all three of you, confiscate it, and have it destroyed. No need for that, Laughlin. It's yours. Hanover. The key itself is encoded into this flash drive. Take it and destroy it. Thank you, Phillips. At least that would clear your conscience of the good professor's death, wouldn't it? No. I hand this to you. I signed Clara Somdi's death warrant. I hand it over to Luxor. I may be signing the death warrant of everybody in this city, but this is all on me. This is my decision. Pass or fail, live or die, whatever happens here, these consequences are on me. They lay on my head. So take it if you have to. Well, we think awfully highly of ourselves, don't we? It's an awfully large burden for one to carry. I can stand it. Alone, if I have to. Fortunately, I don't. But I will stand. You'd better know what you're doing. Besides, at the rate the weather is deteriorating inside of Eastling, its destruction is assured either way. What about evacuation? There's got to be some kind of plan to get people out of here in case of an emergency. The weather system inside is reaching the tunnel exiting the city. We're trying to keep it as clear as possible, but it's a losing battle. Outside the city, it's even worse. The other end of the tunnel is blocked and the road is completely impassable. We've told our civilian forces to help as many people as possible into shelters. Besides, I don't think they would... When the subject of evacuation came up among the citizens, the consensus was they would stay and fight for their city. They don't know how, just that they would. It's getting awfully close to the meeting time. Right. Are we ready to do this? You go. My forces will be right behind you under cover of a silencer field. We got your back, don't worry. Well, no more than is necessary, I suppose. Uh, Hanover, hmm? I don't have to tell you to be careful, so... See you soon. Yeah, you will. Ah, there you are. Well, come on, don't keep us waiting too long. See, I told you, Professor, you'd be here right on time. But hey, punctuality and heroism is what I hear you guys are all about. Professor? Sir Phillips, good to see you again. And before you ask, she's fine. I haven't harmed her in any way. Not physically, anyhow. Have a seat, won't you? Oh, come on, what's the matter? You don't like the idea of being a stationary target? Doesn't mind me, one of your guys is probably back there right now covering me with a rifle, in spite of the fact that I did ask you to come along. You didn't. Ah, facts are facts, and fair enough with paranoia to go all around. Spoken like a true earthling and not a knight, which puts you marks up in my book. Seat? You know, to be totally truthful, I have been wanting to get a good long gander at you ever since I heard you came to this city. The corporate knight from Earth who made an honest girl out of Miro Guillaume. Although that's not much of a stretch, is it? I mean, come on. All of that talent she has put to such good use. Oh, what a waste. An ethical assassin, can you believe it? I tried so hard to get her to see the light on that front, but she just wouldn't take. The entire time I knew her, I tried to drop hints about where I thought her true talents lie. Downtime, training, class, bedroom... Come on, tell me honestly, does she still do that thing where she throws her legs up onto your shoulder and grabs your head with her feet and then wraps her tail around your ass and makes you fight for it? Luxor Brent, I presume? Yeah, that's me. What gave me away? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm just a little bit confused. Are, are you trying to goad me with stories about how you once slept with my partner when she was, what, a teenager? That's kind of what I was doing, yeah. Oh. 
I already knew that. She told me. Oh, really? And it doesn't just burn inside of you that you have to put your cock where so many have gone before. Not even slightly. Oh, no, don't tell me. You actually grew up here in the Midlands, didn't you? Oh, that is a crying shame. You're not all honorable and prudish. You know, a proper earthling would have totally fallen for that. That's a pity beyond pities. Yeah, well, sorry. Can we just get on with our business now, please? That, 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 have a little patience. I want this to happen at its own pace. I want your guys in position so that everybody here is ready. Ready for what? Ready for the big show. Ta-da. You know what this is? Yeah, you know what this is. It's a detonator. Now, by now, your guys over there have probably set up a silencer field just like my guys. And undoubtedly, they've swept that side of the building that they're hiding in for explosives. But they won't have found any. So, I wonder what this could be for. Nope, don't look at the table. There's nothing under there. I want it to be a surprise. So, in the meantime, why don't we just sit back and have a little chat, and I'll tell you when I'm ready to make this flop. You do have my goods, right? Dunno. Guess we'll have to wait and see. Ah. That's the spirit. What are you planning, Luxor? Can you make out what they're saying? The silencer field is cutting it off. But don't worry. He's got something ready for us. Keith! I got him dead in my sight. Should I take him out? No. Luxor said to stand down and wait for his signal. So what is his signal, then? He said we'd know it when we saw it. Now wait. You know what I think? I think all along you Earthlings had it right. And I don't say that lightly. I mean, I know there's a lot of prejudice against you and your ways, but... Whatever happened to the Earth happened, and I think it was for the best. Is that right? Of course. I mean, look at our worlds here. Come on. Dozens of different races and cultures and social institutions all balancing each other out and operating in something resembling harmony. So dull. I mean, even when the corporations took over, you'd think the greed and avarice would have risen to the top in some sort of sense of competition, but... Run by people with entirely too much social conscience. But Earth, though! Hoo-hoo! War, political discord, border disputes, organized crime. Gangs, drugs, corporate greed, weapons of mass destruction, even including biological ones. People willing to tear each other apart over politics, religion, something as simple as skin color, even though they're the same species. Man. Last of the wild frontiers. Not like here, where the best you can hope for is to go into the off-road and find a ruin or maybe some kind of monster that nobody's ever seen before to fight. No. To a guy like me, Earth is the gift that keeps on giving. So many people with so many conflicts, all of them looking for an edge, and they'll pay any price to get it. And that's where I come in. So many toys, so much magic and technology we've developed here that they would love to get their hands on on Earth. And damn the consequences. (laughs) Quick example. A few years ago, I got my hands on an off-road relic, given the rather unimaginative designation as a Class V Devastator. Managed to smuggle it to Earth and sold it to an insurgent group in Africa who were involved in some tribal warfare for a rather hefty amount of diamonds. This particular weapon turns its target's flesh to quartz while it's still alive. Within hours after purchase, they tested it out on one of their local enemy villages. 300 men, women, and children dead. The screams were unimaginable. And after inflicting this unspeakable horror on their fellow countrymen, do you know what they did? They celebrated. They brought it back to their own village and put it in the town square on top of a pedestal and declared it a gift from God himself. After I congratulated them on their purchase, they declared me a holy messenger and held a small feast in my honor. When I left them, they were happily discussing plans on how they were going to turn it on some of the other villages nearby. (laughs) Fun, fun times. And did they use it? Oh, well, that's the fun times part. You see... I should have sold them the lead-lined case that it came in, because this particular relic, well, when you turn it on, you sort of wake it up, and it doesn't go back to sleep unless you seal it away. Till then, it just stays hungry. Came back two days later to pick it up again. Found a village full of statues. You could still hear their moans of pain reverberating through the crystal. Still got it locked away in storage. After this is over, maybe I'll dig it out and take it to... What do you think, Afghanistan? I can see that look of distaste in both your eyes. But the best part about this story is it's just one of many. 
both from me and from so many other people on the earth, both immigrants and natives. The biggest fear is that the madness of that place will someday infect the Midlands and turn us all to strife and discord and racial war. How I pray for that day, if only to keep things interesting. So, before we start, any editorial comments? You try too hard. Let's begin, Sean. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean I try too hard? To shock me. You're trying entirely too hard. I know all about you. Nero's told me. I know what you've done. I know what you're capable of. I've seen what you've done. You are hands down the most evil person I have ever met. I didn't think anyone could sink as low as you can, and you have proved me wrong. You want everyone to fear you. You want everyone to hate you. You want everyone to want you dead. We do. I would be lying if I told you that before I came here, I was filled with dread and apprehension about meeting Lux or Brandt because I had no idea what kind of monster I was dealing with. And I have to say, you have lived up to your reputation. You are evil. What I know about your background, you were afforded every opportunity to turn out, well, good. A contributing member of society, I suppose. By sure force of will, here you are. I thought given the opportunity, most people would turn out good, but you've proven me wrong. Some people are just evil, and you're one of them. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I don't know if any of that was intended as a compliment, but I certainly do take it as one. And then you just go on and on and on. I don't know what else you expect from me. I already loathe you. You just keep dropping hints about what you've done, and what you're going to do, what you might do. That little story, all designed to, what, make my skin crawl, give me the willies, make it worse? I, I don't know. You're impressive, Luxor Brandt, but uh, you must be a bear to work for, because to be honest, your act gets pretty tedious. Act. Hmm. Hadn't thought of it that way. Act. Well, I'm sorry you found my performance a little boring. Maybe I should follow it up with a quick encore and lop off a piece of Professor Samdi right in front of you. Oh, you don't have to do that, because if you so much as twitch in her direction, I will unleash a knight's attack on you so powerful it will liquefy your internal organs. And I don't care how many guns you have pointed at me. I don't care if there's a bomb under this desk. I don't care if it's the last act I make in this life. Before you take two steps. Really? So, what's stopping you? The sadness in her eyes. Come again? The depths of sadness and despair in Nero's eyes every time she talks about you. The loneliness in her heart. The love that she keeps locked away that I can never penetrate or erase. The knowing that if not for her ethics, or for the loyalty she feels to her family, she would cast aside her weapons and run into your arms and try to save you from yourself. It's that sadness that holds me back. Really? Well, so that's how Nero feels about me, huh? No. Psych. <sighs> Oh, I like you. Now I know we can do business. Good, let's get started. My ass is getting tired. You play a very dangerous game, Sir Phillips. You'd be surprised at how ill-thought through these things are. Yes, well, as you can see, I've brought my end of the deal here, viz. Professor Somdi, who was so quiet during our conversation, I practically forgot she was there. So, how's the old experiment coming along, Professor? Oh, most interesting. New data appearing every moment. I'll have to let you know how it turns out. You do that. Now, Sir Phillips, my key. Got it right here. They're getting ready to make the swap. I want snipers on Brandt. Everyone else aim for the far wall and give Phillips and the Professor cover fire until they're clear. Laughlin, be prepared for anything. Luxor is not going to let this go off that easy. We're well aware of that, Miss Guillaume. Everyone wait for my signal. They're in position. Everyone get ready. Keys, what's he going to do? I don't know. Just wait and watch. So... That's it, huh? It took a little doing, but that's it, yes. <sighs> Seems like such a tiny thing to trade for a life, doesn't it? You're the one who set the terms, not me. Really, is this what we've been waiting for all this time? What are you asking me for? Don't be so self-centered, Phillips. I'm not asking you. Well, is it or not? Yes. Public address system. My client likes to keep a low profile. It's a bit like Charlie's Angels, I guess. Champion, my time is near. 
Yeah, I'm not sure which one of us he was addressing there. You have no idea what you've gotten yourself into, have you? Way, way over my head. Just the way I like it. Now, place that on the table, would you please? Right in front of me. There you go. Thank you. Now, I'm not going to pick it up. Just like I'm not going to let Professor Somdi go. And here's why. Right behind you, in the darkness of the shadows behind those boxes, is a whole row of heavily armed police officers. And back behind me, with the shadows and crates and all, my guys, probably just as heavily equipped. Now, the second this trade is made, you and I, well, all three of us, really, are dead meat. I'm not going to let you walk away from this alive. Laughlin's certainly not going to let me walk away from this alive. And not that I blame him. Not that I blame anyone all around. That's just the way business is done these days. So, the question is, how do we extricate ourselves from the situation with any hope of survival? And that brings me to my little toy here. The detonator. Exactly. However, while it was identified as a detonator earlier, I prefer to think of it more of an activator. See, I arranged the swap, and I set everything up. I got here first with my guys, but I got here ahead of them, and I could have set up anything. Nice big explosive device, for example. But that's not very good. It doesn't really give you a way of escaping big fireball-y, detonate shrapnel explosion, you know? So for survival purposes, I would say we need less destruction and more distraction. Two lines of very, very nervous people with lots of guns pointed at each other, even though they can't see exactly who or what they're firing at. I mean, tensions run quite high, don't you think? I mean, anything could happen. Anything could set it off. You know, like if somebody put up a device in the ceiling with two semi-automatic rifles pointed at both sides and then triggered it. That'd be, well, let's face it, fun times. Both sides would open up and wipe each other out, don't you think? You wouldn't. Wouldn't I? You haven't been paying very close attention to my performance, Sir Phillips. Some people are just bad. You have been listening to The Account, A Tale of the Waking World, The Snows Are Eternal, Part 14. Written and performed by Kaya and Chris Conroy as part of the Technical Difficulties Podcast Series. TechDiff at gmail.com is the address. Comment on this show or any other at techdiff.com. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash techdiff or look for Technical Difficulties on Facebook. The discussion board is techdiff.freeforums.org. To be continued next week in The Snows Are Eternal, Part 15. Until then. Meanwhile, back on the home front, here's some information that you can use. I'm way behind on mail, but I've got to catch up with some people. Somebody sent in a brilliant idea uh, with uh, regarding to the Advent calendar, and that is that uh, if I can't do all 25 days of the Advent calendar because I haven't finished the account, um, and especially since the account is ramping up towards its finale, which I'm going to try and get done by the end of November. Anyway, if all of that fails, and I don't get it done by the end of November, somebody suggested to me, Instead of doing 25 episodes of the Advent Calendar, why not do the 12 Days of Christmas? And I thought, oh, that's a brilliant idea, and it never occurred to me. Here's the weird thing about the 12 Days of Christmas, though, which I'll uh, probably reiterate for those of you who, you know, are there at the time. Uh, The 12 Days of Christmas actually starts on Christmas and goes through the the beginning of January. Well, that's not going to work. Screw that. But I may do 12 episodes as 12 Days of Christmas. Maybe not the 12 Days of Christmas, but 12 Days of Christmas. It works. People know what that is. The general consensus, uh, though, was that people would rather that I continue the account until it's over than stop it just as it's you know finishing up and you know pause it to do comedy. They'd they'd rather I finish it. So I'm going to do my damnedest to have the story done by then. Right now, if this were the um, if this were the uh, like a movie, we'd be entering the final the final lap, such as it is. So I, I can't see it going more than a you know I don't know maybe three more episodes. I hope. Uh, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. I know how it's going to end. I'm just 
wondering how long it's going to take to get there. But I've also learned in the past that the best thing to do at this point is to just kind of forget things and gallop forward, and that's what I plan on doing. That's all I have to say to people. I have a lot of really, really great Gmails from folks at techtiff at gmail.com. Thank you so much for, for sending your opinion and for sending me any other advice. And I've really got to catch up with stuff. I've just I've been really lazy about the mail. So if you've sent me a mail and I haven't responded to it, I do apologize. I will get to I'm month literally a few months behind at this point. Um, so I'll 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 check up with uh, I'll get that going as soon as possible. And coming in the next year, well, you know what? I'll tell you all about that later. I got some cool things coming up in the next year and oh, it's going to be a lot of work. All right, talk to you guys next week. Bye. Addison is on the air. Do you love old time radio? Yeah! You know absolutely nothing about old-time radio. Also, yes. Then Madison on the Air is for you. Follow Madison, a modern-day makeup influencer, as she zapped back into the golden age of radio. Every episode is standalone with a wide variety of genres to choose from, like detective noir. You put the dick in private dick. Superheroes. So I am in the body of the green hornet. Westerns. Saloon fight. Now this is a western. Sci-fi. Dude, the Martian's got a freaking heat ray. Plus classic characters. Toto. Oh, I gotta get that dog into an obedience class. Really digging Dracula's OG goth style. <gasps> what if I killed freaking Sherlock Holmes? And many more. Actual old-time radio scripts adapted. It's like if the MST3K riff tracks guys were in the movies they riff. Start at the beginning or jump around to any title that grabs you. New episodes premiere the first of every month. Find us wherever you get your podcasts.